Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And you can see I'm not at the door to my house in the Appalachian Mountains at 2,700 feet, but I'm at zero feet above sea level at North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina in a campground with my van build camper that I converted in the last year from a cargo van into a camping van with a full-size bed, electric wiring, cedar paneling, and sheep wool for insulation. But today's episode is not about my van, it's about a bird called the sanderling. And sanderlings are a kind of sandpiper that if you've been on practically any coastline around the world, you've probably seen these sanderling birds running up and down in front of the waves. They are so fun to watch. In this episode, I'm gonna tell you five things you ought to know about these birds called the sanderling. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So the first thing you should know about sanderlings is how to identify them. They're fat little birds about the size of your fist, rather plump looking, with a round head, and they've got a black long beak and black legs. When they fly, you can see kind of white and black stripes under, under their wings if you look very carefully. But one of the best ways to identify them is by location. These guys love to be on the sand and their behavior, they run up and down in front of the waves. So those are some of the best ways to identify the sanderling. Their common name, sanderling, actually came from Audubon and he called them the Sanderling Sandpiper. But a lot of people thought that was a little bit too much uh, re repetitiveness in it. So now they just call them Sanderlings. And Sanderling means little bird of the sand. So sandpipers are birds that run along the sand and chirp. So most of the other sandpipers are found in marshes, back bays, and spend most of their time on mud flats. The sanderling might be considered to be the true sandpiper because he's always found on the sandy beach fronts. The scientific name, Calidris alba. Calidris had to do with the Aristotle word for birds that live on beaches. And alba means white. And you can see that the sanderling has always has a very, very white breast without speckles on it. Some of the other birds, like the palmated sandpiper, has a little more flecking on its chest. The third thing you should know about them is their behavior. And what sanderlings do is they run up and down the beach. The wave comes in, they'll run away from it, and like kids playing tag, when it recedes, they'll run back towards the wave, and then on the next wave, they'll run back up on the beach. So that is a behavior you can always use to recognize sanderlings. They're very, very active. But they also, when you watch them run, it's like the part of their, the main part of their body does not move or bob. It's almost like their legs are bicycling. Part of this ability to run like that is the fact that they have no rear claw. And so they can move very quickly and very smoothly down the sand. The fourth thing you should know about sanderlings is what they eat. And what they eat is closely tied to the behavior you see about how they run up and down the beach. What they're doing as they run in the waves and run back is they're following the surf line, the surf zone of the beach, the point where the waves break and move back and forth. This is a very rich environment with detritus and plankton for many filter feeding organisms sand crabs, mole crabs, amphipods, isopods, mollusks of all kinds, including bivalves and gastropods, like these coquina clams. Coquina clams move up and down the beach in the surf zone, feeding on particles stirred up by the waves. And as a wave recedes, they quickly bury themselves. Like these coquina clams, I'm demonstrating how they bury. I collected a few, put them in a little aquarium for a few minutes, 
took some photographs of them and watched them very. So these are the kinds of things that the sanderlings are looking for and they probe the sand with those beaks. Because they put their mouth in the sand over and over and over and over again, they take in a lot of sand. And also in eating some of these mollusks, they have shells. So at the end of the feeding time, it's not uncommon to see them regurgitate pellets made up of sand and mollusk shell particles. Just like owls uh, cough up pellets of bone and fur of some of the animals that they eat. The fifth thing you should know about sanderlings is that they're migratory species. <laughs> I think it's so cool when I'm here relatively early in the winter and see these sanderlings and know they're just here for the winter time. The breeding sanderlings will fly from here all the way up to the Arctic Circle and nest and pair bond and raise their eggs where they both participate in taking care of the offspring. And then they will fly back here for the winter time again. Some sanderlings will fly from 1,800 miles to 6,000 miles. Sanderlings, while they breed in the Arctic, they are found on beaches all over the world. So this bird here may be one of the most ubiquitous of all the waterfront, beachfront birds in the world. There's some evidence that these birds' population may have already declined by 80%. So there's some concern there, as we are with all of our wildlife. Migrating sanderlings actually have breeding plumage, which has a lot more color and more tones of reds and browns in it. These winter plumage that you mostly see when you're here on the beaches is more grayish on the top, a silvery kind of gray, and always, always very white chest and white underneath. Sanderlings are really fun, active little birds to watch. I really enjoy watching bird behavior, especially sanderlings as they move up and down the beach. At the end of the day, they take a rest too, as I found this group of sanderlings hanging out here, along with some willets, I believe, which is a larger sandpiper-like bird. Sanderlings, during the mating season, will act aggressively towards other birds, but during their winter time, they tend to group together a bit more and act a little bit more sociable with the other birds. But you may still see some aggressive interactions, especially in and around the breeding season, which is typically in late June into July. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature at Your Door and learning a few things about sanderlings. I just have so much fun watching them run up and down the waves. They're fascinating to me. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel and give me a like. And remember, I always love hearing from my viewers. Uh, tell me your stories. What are your experiences with the organisms that we've seen? Or I'll answer any questions you have. I really like interacting with my viewers. Thanks for watching. Nature at your door.